Welcome to journal entries number nine. So just reading through my journal and um, I'll go ahead and start with, this is the date 7106. Um, I'm gonna have to change the names a little bit and so if I stop and hesitate it's because I'm trying to keep everything confidential. So um, it says last night we went to a picnic at Ivy Wild. It was a uh, get to know each other party for a couple people that were getting married so just a couple of my friends um, and friends of relatives I guess so uh, yesterday at the party I learned a huge life lesson um, one of family members on my ex-husband's side called me over to talk to her she told me that it is important for um, her and someone else to stick to their bottom line that they imposed um, at an intervention that we did with my ex-husband. Um, and so she told me that one person had shown up and they left and that she was going to leave too because I had invited my ex-husband to the picnic. I was shocked and sick to my stomach. She said that um, the person, the friend <laughs> that we were there for in the first place was in tears. Yikes, I had create, created all of this because I didn't stick to my bottom line. Um, my daughter had emailed me and told me that the next time that he comes over to my house, she will call the police. This was a huge eye opener for me. I see the picture a little more clearly on how I continue to keep my ex-husband sick. Um, when another family member was telling somebody and he, um, he was very upset that this happened. So my daughter, like when she just wanted to see her dad and so I was always felt so torn. And the other one, she wanted me to stick to my bottom line, uh, what I had set when we had the intervention. So it was really hard for me to do this. And, I, and this was a huge eye opener because I felt so bad from what I had caused from inviting him to this when they had their bottom lines as well. And so they stuck to their bottom lines and they left given the situation. Um, that it was like this wedding party. It's something that they should have been to and um, It definitely helped me see things in a different light because I was still uh, fell into this trap and still fell it fell into trying to people please and um, Not being able to set good boundaries for myself and that was it like I just the boundary setting was so hard for me because I never had a good example when it came to that. So, um, man, it was just, I felt so torn. So I continue on. It says, this morning I emailed my ex-husband and set up, set up the opportunity for me to start over with my bottom line. I also emailed another person that I was seeing telling him that I couldn't see him anymore. I blamed it on my counselor, but it really is, uh, it just wasn't right that there was red flags all over the place. <laughs> so at least at this point, I was seeing red flags in relationships because, I don't know, <laughs> wasn't the best picker, I guess. 7906. I was seeing this guy um, for a couple of weeks. He took the girls and I to the drive-in movie theater and he also took us out for breakfast at the Nampa airport. Yesterday he took me and the girls and I to a movie. Um, Chelsea saw Cars and um, the guy and Tyler and I saw Click. I cried. It was a great movie and a message. Family is most important and don't lose sight of that. He stayed most of the day, well, until after 9 p.m., and Tyler kept saying in front of him that we needed to go grocery shopping, and he never quite took the hint. Today, he called, and Chelsea answered the phone, and he told her to tell me that he was coming over. I don't like that he invites himself. I don't get very much quality time with kids, and I am upset that he 
took so much of the time yesterday. We left before he came over. <laughs> That was my way of, I don't know, I just couldn't like say no or call back and say this isn't a good idea. Like I always had to go backdoor ways of, I don't know, communication. I just don't think I learned how to do that very well or gave myself um, the empowerment to do that. It was a nice day today. The girls and I went to Roaring Springs on our way. We were singing, it's peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly time. <laughs> I guess, oops, <laughs> my purse just fell. Um, pineapple. And then we'd all point our fingers to Gracie and she says, Apple. <laughs> she is starting to say so many new words lately, like springs for roaring springs. Lean means Vaseline. Poo for shampoo. Wabi for water. And when she farts she points to one of us and says our names and tries to blame it on us for farting <laughs> silly girl i'm having so much fun with her um she saw uh let's see says oh dude oops ote for this is my favorite catch for watch she is still an excellent eater she is such a smart little girl i just watched her put the ipad together um, and turn it on and put it up to her ear. She shook her head. Yes, like I hear the music. Her smile is to die for. <laughs> I just loved having like quality time with my girls and so this this was nice anytime I, I got this. 71906. I feel like I am starting to find myself a little bit. It's been nice going on nightly rollerblading rides with my girls. We are slowly finding our own rituals and bonding together. My friend from Salt Lake called me a few days ago out of the blue. I have been thinking about him lately. I really like the fact that he is spiritual. He is healthy in mind and in spirit. I really connected with him. The first time I met him and um, his wisdom blew me away. I am looking forward to seeing him again. Uh, 72306. Yesterday I got a sponsor in Al-Anon. She actually called me and asked if I could, oh, if she could be my sponsor because I am too afraid to ask for help, which was one of my problems. Her name is uh, Chia. My first assignment is to make a list of things that make my life unmanageable. Mm. One, I cannot control the fact that my